All right, so here we are with lesson B, superposition and standing waves. Now, when a person plays a musical instrument, like a, a trumpet or a flute, it makes sound waves. Listeners hear the sound waves traveling through the air that that instrument emits. But the more important sound waves are the ones that stay inside that instrument, the tube of that instrument. These are called standing waves, and they determine the sound that the instrument produces. So we're going to be looking at standing waves in this, in this lesson. But before we can talk about standing waves, we have to understand how two or more traveling waves interact with each other, what happens when they meet with each other, what happens when they overlap. This combination is called a superposition. And we're going to begin by looking at reflection of waves and into superposition, and then finally be able to talk about standing waves uh, near the end of the video. So here we go. So when a wave is traveling through any given medium and encounters a new medium, like sound from air into water, two things are going to happen. First, some of the energy of the wave is going to keep on going into that new medium. And second, some of the wave energy gets reflected back from the direction it came. So that the point where those two mediums meet is called a boundary. If the difference in the wave velocity is big, then most of the wave is going to be reflected. Okay, so this is what happens when a wave on a string encounters a physical barrier. The wave gets reflected. We also see this when like a sound wave hits a canyon wall. We get an echo. But if the difference in the wave velocity is small, most of the wave will be transmitted into the new medium. And this is what happens like when light strikes glass or sound encounters water. Now, when the, a wave travels from one medium into another, the frequency of that wave does not change. It stays the same which means that the wavelength does have to change. Similarly, for reflected waves, the frequency does not change. So we're going to be looking at reflection here. There's two types of reflection. The type of reflection depends on how the mediums at the boundary are allowed to move. So we have what's called fixed end reflection and free end reflection. For fixed end reflection, like here, like we've got a string attached to a wall, as that wave moves down, it gets reflected off that boundary, and when it's reflected, it's reflected 180 degrees out of phase so that it comes back uh, moving in the, uh, you know, the, the amplitude is in the opposite direction uh, as the original direction. So we say that the wave is reflected out of phase. For the uh, re free end reflection, this is like, say, if we got a ring attached to a string, and that this reflecting end is able to move. When that wave gets reflected, see how this end is able to move up? It's like another uh, person pulling that rope upward. And so we get a uh, wave, a reflected wave that is in phase as it moves back. So now, let's imagine uh, if I were to send a pulse down this, you know, I send this pulse down this string, it gets reflected, it's reflecting out of phase, and as it's coming back the other direction, I bring that rope up again, and I send another pulse moving in the opposite direction. So I got one pulse moving left to right, and the reflecting pulse going right to left. What is going to happen when those two wave pulses meet each other? And I can do the same thing here, right? If this reflecting wave is coming back, if I send another one down, uh, they're both going in the same direction in that case, what's going to happen when those two waves meet? Well, what's going to happen is called superposition. You see, waves are different than masses, right? If two masses were to be going in opposite directions at each other and hit each other, we'd get a collision, right? When they come in, they, two masses cannot occupy the same space at the same time. Waves are energy, Right? So when two or more waves are simultaneously present at a single point in space, then the displacement of the medium at that point is the sum of the displacements due to each individual wave. That's the law of superposition. Now, if I've got a bunch of waves moving toward each other, like here, maybe I've got two pebbles that I've thrown into the water and they each send out their respective waves. When those waves meet, each of those waves will superimpose. Their crests will superimpose over their crests and the troughs over the troughs. And uh, what I end up with is what's called an interference pattern. Okay, so this here is an interference pattern of two sets of waves. Now, there's two types of interference that we're going to talk about. There's what's called constructive interference and destructive interference. With constructive interference, that's where two waves traveling at each other that are in phase with each other, okay, they meet and they 
basically they add up, making one large wave, and then they continue moving on in their respective directions. With destructive interference, we get a cancellation of waves, right? So when those two waves are moving in opposite directions, they cancel out and then continue moving on in opposite directions. So we say that these waves are out of phase when they meet. Now, if we have several waves moving, uh, you know, across through a medium, right? So say we take a string, we attach it to a wall here, begin to shake this string up and down. We're going to get waves reflecting in phase and out of phase. They're going to superimpose destructively at times and constructively at other times. So what we end up doing is creating what's called a standing wave, right? For standing waves, when the frequency is the correct value, the incident wave and the reflected wave will alternately interfere with each other constructively and destructively. And the, the effect of that is that the parts of the string will not move at all and other parts will undergo a whole lot of motion. The parts where the string doesn't move at all, like right there, right there, right there, those are called nodes. And the parts where the string uh, undergoes a whole lot of motion those are called anti-nodes. So we're going to get standing waves only for certain frequencies on any given length of string. For example, I mean, here we've got a standing wave. We've got one, two, three, four, five nodes on this standing, uh, standing wave. Okay? So this wave, uh, you know, we, we see it coming this way, and then there, there's uh, a trough there, and a crest there, and a trough here, right? That means then that the, the wavelength of this wave stretches from this uh, crest there to this crest there, right? So there's, uh, there's the wavelength of that string, right? Or, I mean, of that wave, right? So here's the wavelength, right? So if we take this wavelength at any point in that wave, that's a wavelength. I take any two points of that wave, that's the wavelength, right? So I can bring it down here and go from trough to trough. There is a wave wavelength, and from this point to that point, there is a wavelength. If I stick it at the end of this, I see, I notice right here, that this wavelength encompasses three nodes. What this tells me then is that for any standing wave, every three nodes of that standing wave will be one wavelength. Okay, so for this particular standing wave here, I've got one, I've got two wavelengths on there. So what that tells me is that the length of this string is two times the wavelength. Now the set of all possible standing waves that can form in a tube or in a string or whatever are known as the harmonics of that system. The simplest of the harmonics is called the fundamental harmonic or first harmonic. Subsequent standing waves are called the second harmonic, third harmonic, and so on. So the harmonics above the fundamental, especially like in music theory, are sometimes called overtones. So in fixed end uh, standing waves, right, so this would be like a guitar string or shaking a string up and down, the, the fundamental harmonic is going to be half a wavelength, and we have what's called the fundamental frequency there. If we go to the next harmonic, then the the harmo the length of the string is equal to the wavelength, right? And we get twice the fundamental frequency. And as we go on, we see, you know, the length of the string here is going to be three halves the wavelength, and we'll get three times the fundamental frequency, and so on. And over here, we're showing what's called free-end reflection, or free-end standing waves, right? So this would be like um, a lot of the different wind instruments, clarinet and whatnot. Right? So over here is a free end, uh, that's where that, that wave continues on. Uh, and what we've got here then, the length of that tube is one-fourth the uh, wavelength uh, for the first harmonic. And we don't get another standing wave until we get to uh, three-fourths of a wavelength, which would be three times the fundamental frequency. All right, so that'll do it for uh, standing waves and superposition, but we'll uh, see you in class.